here, what's little k tilde? Well, little k tilde is just z mod p, right? You know, in this, in this case, this is little k, this is big K. So here, by lemma one, this says that the size of v0 mod v1 divides p minus one. But v1 is actually trivial, so the size of v0 divides p minus one. I right, just proved that v1 was trivial. Okay. <coughs> So I'm, I'm gaining some information about, about the ramification groups. That's, that's what the structure of this proof. Okay, so let, right, so I, I mean, you know, you know that the ramification groups all sit inside the Galois group. The Galois group has power, has order, which is a power of lambda, lambda to the m. So V0 has size some other power of lambda, or maybe m as well. And what I've just concluded is that, right, saying that the size of V0 divides P minus one, well, P is congruent to one mod lambda to the U, okay? So what are we gonna do from that? Well, essentially what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do from that is I'm gonna use, use this fact over here to construct a cyclotomic field I'm going to take the compositum of K with that cyclotomic field and study something about how P ramifies in that composite. So, right, so, so for, for this prime P, right, look at, look at Q, ma, Q adjoins zeta sub P, the P through to B. Right, what's the order of the Galois group of that thing? Well, it's p minus one. It's that's fact five over there. It's a cyclic group of size p minus one, and lambda to the u actually divides p minus one. So, so we can find an extension L. We can find the subfield of this guy. Such that the degree of that subfield over Q is actually lambda to the U. Right? I, lambda to the U divides divides the order of, of your Galois group. You know, I mean, so this Galois group has a unique index lambda to the U subgroup. L is the fixed field of that guy. And from this thing here, I'm going to form the composite. Okay. So, okay, so recall what's happening in this picture. I have P is a prime sitting downstairs, beta is a prime which lies above it, and I'm going to choose some beta prime in the compositum which actually lies, lies above beta as well. So, right, so I've, I've formed the composite, composite. I'm going to look at the ramification groups of that guy. So suppose, so the, the prime is essentially going to denote, every time I use a prime, it's going to be the comparable thing that's sitting inside KL. So like KL be, what, I'm sorry, T prime be the inertia group <coughs> of this prime, beta prime sitting, sitting over P. Right, what what can you say about what can you say about this guy here? Okay, well, right, so so fact six right, by by fact six I know that the Galois group of the compositum actually sits inside. G cross H, where G is the Galois group of K over Q, and H is the Galois group of L over Q. 
And so if I look at this inertia group here, right, T prime is going to sit inside this product as well, but actually you could do a little bit better than that. It's actually going to sit inside T cross H. And, right, and the reason for that is if I take anything in T prime, what's the definition of T prime? V0. It's things which, you know, for which sigma of x is congruent to x mod beta prime. If I restrict that automorphism down to, down to k, it actually lives inside T as well. So T prime sits inside T cross H. Okay, but... So first of all, what do I know about the size of T prime? Well, so, so first of all, let me just say what I know. So I claim that the size of T prime is actually bigger than the size of T, which is lambda to the mu, lambda to the u, sorry. And that's obvious because, right, what is the size of T? Well, it's measuring how much something ramifies. And so, I mean, if P <coughs> ramifies a certain amount in K, it clearly has to ramify at least as much when I look up to beta prime. The ramification actually is multiplicative, it can't go down. So the inertia group here, which has size equal to the ramification, is going to be at least lambda to the U. Okay? At the same time, T prime is actually cyclic. And the reason for that is, is right over here on the board. The same, the same argument that I gave over here shows you that the higher ramification groups of KL are trivial. And right, remember, V0 was cyclic. So here, T prime is cyclic as well. But if I look at the elements of T cross H, Sorry, can you explain why the higher ramification of KL is trivial? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's, the, it's the exact same argument here. Right? I, I have... It's still a billion. But it's not a P extension anymore. What do, you, what do you mean? I mean, you use the fact that lambda to a power couldn't equal P to a power, but KL still... It's not. Right, right, but like... P so, is still lambda. Power lambda. Yeah, the, so, right, the, the yeah, log groups oh, because of KL need, sits inside something yeah, which has order I agree. lambda to the cool. M times lambda to the U. Okay. So are you good? Right. So, so T prime has size at least lambda to the U. It's cyclic. But if I look at elements of T cross H, they have order at most lambda to the U. Because T is a group of order lambda to the U. H is a group of order lambda to the U as well elements in their product have order at most lambda to the u. So I have a cyclic group, its size is at least lambda to the u, but every element has order at most lambda to the u. Well, those two facts together actually tell me that the size of t prime has to equal lambda to the u. So I mean, if, if, even if you're not following the individual proofs, the fact to know is that if you look at this ramification group inside KL, call it T prime, it has size lambda to the U, which is the same as the individual sizes of each of the ramification groups. Meaning that, right, as much as P ramifies in K, it doesn't ramify anymore when you look at it in KL, because the two groups are the same size. Okay. So I'm almost done, but <coughs> let's look at the fixed field of this guy. 